Good afternoon. I'd like to call the City Council meeting of June 21st, 2016 to order. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please call the roll. Council Member Dominguez? Present. Hart? Here. Hotchkiss? Here. Murillo? Here. Rouse? Here. White, Mayor Snyder. Here. Okay, any changes to the agenda? Yes, Madam Mayor, we'd like when you get to the consent calendar to remove item 14, the lease agreements with nonprofit organizations at the West Side Neighborhood Center. It's a technical cleanup we'd like to make in the leases. We'll bring that back within a week or two. Okay, and we're also going to pull item 26 um, just because that evaluation process is not ready yet. So we'll do that at a another time so those are the two uh, public comment I have two speaker slips here with me and you have two minutes at the podium we have Lee Moldaver and then Phil Walker um, good afternoon Madam Mayor members of council um, I'm Lee Moldaver a private citizen would have been here last week when it was probably uh, doubly uh, appropriate, but I had that respiratory crud that's been going around and was kind of flat on my heels. Um, one of Santa Barbara's most enthusiastic and engaged civic leaders, uh, Sylvia Glass, um, my friend and former neighbor, uh, just within the last week or 10 days, has left double digits behind uh, and is still watching over the city. Uh, from her home near uh, Foothill, but um, has uh, attained an even loftier level of eminence. Speaking of which, uh, I want to congratulate uh, the council and Mr. Casey on the selection of the new police chief. Uh, comes with a very strong record in San Diego. And one of the things in San Diego that the department was committed to was something you've heard about before um, from my friend Eva Imbar, Vision Zero. Now, later this week, we're going to have a public demonstration of traffic safety from the police department, and I think that's terrific. But wouldn't it be an amazing way for the new chief to start off to have a conversation with the city uh, and the men and women sworn in her department about having the idea of Vision Zero and traffic safety for everybody a high priority all year round, not on one or two demonstration days before solstice or fiesta, but all year round in every neighborhood, at every major intersection, for residents, for visitors, for young, for old, for children, for workers, two-wheel, on foot, four-wheel. This is something that the city could do. It could bring in revenue to meet unmet needs for infrastructure, legally and easily, and I hope that in future conversations it's something you discuss with her, as I hope I will too. Thank you. Bill Walker. Good afternoon, Madam Mayor, members of the City Council. Traffic safety, crossing the street, have eyes in the back of your head. It's the one that hits you that you don't see coming, especially on Anacapa, Valerio area. Uh, that's uh, an intense speed way. I even saw a police officer moving very quickly in his uh, patrol car in line with the traffic. Okay, there was a, uh, uh, an official with the LA County Department of Public Health, a medical doctor on KNX last night, and she was expressing a lot, a lot of concern trying to get it out to the general public, the effects of the, I call the heat storm, recently starting to abate now, but uh, so many people have wound up in the emergency rooms, and she brought up the fact that uh, a lot, a lot of people do not have access to air conditioning. They're probably on the second floor of multiple uh, unit family housing, and uh, they're also having to prop open their windows, and unfortunately there have been several uh, toddlers that have fallen out the second story windows. They, thankfully, they were not hurt very bad, but... Uh, People do what they have to do to survive, but then she brought up uh, we need more trees down in L.A. for shade and more uh, cool roofs. And the whole thing with the affordable, low-cost housing rehab program, I remember probably eight to ten years ago now, 
it sort of fell, fell off the face of the world. And let's hear it for cool roofs. One other quick thing. Annapamu Street is certainly becoming a trail of tears. The, the way the stone pines are quickly uh, falling into demise. And now they're talking about removing, which is also at the northeast corner of Annapamu and Santa Barbara Street, the Redwood Grove. They're going to have to take them down. They're flaring. And, uh, you know, gold, the sign right in front of City uh, Hall here, gold is a new green. It's becoming more like, let's get to reality. You need to save the trees at least. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that concludes public comment. We move on to the consent calendar. We're removing item 14, and there's some items to read. Item number four, acceptance of a public street easement at Hardin de Las Rosas Apartments, 5110 North Sabotes Street, recommending that council adopt by reading of title only a resolution of the Council of the City of Santa Barbara, accepting a dedication of a street easement deed for street and all related purposes on the property private property known as 510 North Silparides Street. Item number five, acceptance of water meter easement for 1200 and 1212 Mission Canyon Road, recommending that council adopt by reading of title only a resolution of the Council of the City of Santa Barbara accepting an agreement for access to water meters and grant of easement for 1200 and 1212 Mission Canyon Road. Item number 20, Parking and Business Improvement Area, Annual Assessment Rates for Fiscal Year 2017 Public Hearing. Item number B, adopt by reading of title only a resolution of the Council of the City of Santa Barbara fixing and assessing the parking and business improvement area assessment rates for fiscal year 2017 and confirming approval of the parking and business improvement area annual assessment report for fiscal year 2017. Thank you. Without further objection, we'll wait for the reading. I do have a public comment. Speaker slip on 17, and Mr. Rouse, you needed to pull a couple of items. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I need to uh, recuse myself on both uh, the item 16 uh, regarding uh, you know, the maintenance contract with the downtown organization, as I'm a BID board member, and uh, item 20, uh, because I am a PBI paying member of the business district. Okay. So is there a motion for item number 16 and 20? So moved, Madam Mayor. Okay. Moved by Maria, second by Hotchkiss. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Zero and one abstention. One abstention, Mr. Rouse. Okay. Um, uh, item 17. Can you read item 17, please? Donation of firefighting equipment to the fire department by the Santa Barbara Firefighters Allegiance. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Cashman, come on up and. Chief McElroy. Hello. Good afternoon, um, Madam Mayor and Council. Um, today I'd really like to uh, recognize the Firefighters Alliance and its President Paul Cashman. Um, over the past, I think, probably 10, 10 years, we've received, uh, between County Fire and ourselves, in excess of a million dollars in equipment donated by the Firefighters Alliance. And I, I really want to point out that it's not the day-to-day regular equipment that you folks all give to us, the citizens all pay for for us. This is something that allows us to do more cutting-edge stuff. Um, somebody goes out on a fire, sees something we ha we've never seen before, high-tech things, uh, thermal imaging cameras come to mind. And uh, in, in this particular grant, we have a new phone app that alerts us ahead of, uh, ahead of our dispatch when calls are coming in from out of our jurisdiction so we can start moving Faster, which is, you know, through the 911 cell phone thing is very important to me. But anyway, um, to, we've got this app today. We also got some urban search and rescue equipment, some saws, and some communications equipment. I just want to recognize Paul and the Alliance for everything that they do for us. Thank you, Chief. I'm Madam Mayor, members of Council, it's good to see you. Uh, I just want to thank uh, the members of the community that have supported our efforts to raise money for Seating County Fire for this technical equipment. Again, it's equipment that uh, we'd like to have on the trucks, but not, doesn't necessarily fit into the budget. And so we're there. So a good example of it is in the um, T fire. Just prior to the T fire, we're able to purchase the night vision uh, equi uh, uh, goggles equipment for the pilots to wear, so they could fly the helicopters that night. Which, if you remember that evening, it stopped it right on the ridge there uh, through the helicopter above Harvard. So. Um, 
lot of great community support and the volunteers of the association. Our thanks go out to all those who uh, endeavored to uh, support our efforts. We'll be inviting all of you to our next fundraiser uh, in May uh, called our annual Fireball Fundraiser, and um, we're looking forward to that event and further supplements of fund for the city and county fire departments. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, Madam Mayor, if yes, I could, Mr. Mr. Cashman, Hopkins. Chief. I guess it, it, one could consider it an exaggeration to say that you helped save the city, but clearly you did. Fire, fire could virtually destroy Santa Barbara, and so we never think in those terms probably just as well. We go around with our heads between our legs in fear, but um, truly everything that you've done is immensely appreciated. Thanks very much for doing it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, is there a motion for the balance of the consent calendar? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, moved by Rouse, second by Murillo. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Uh, report from the Ordinance Committee, Mr. Rouse. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Today the Ordinance Committee met and we were presented um, uh, with uh, the uh, designation of the Historic uh, Resource Protection from um, uh, Mr. Hernandez and Mr. Lamone. And uh, we have a lot of Ordinance Committee meetings coming up to discuss that further, the timeline to eventually bring that back to Council sometime next year. Great. Okay. Item number 22. Adoption of the Operating and Capital Budget for Fiscal Year 2017, recommending that Council adopt by reading of title only. A resolution of the Council of the City of Santa Barbara adopting budget for the fiscal year 2017 by appropriating monies for the use and support of said city from funds and to the purposes herein specified. B, a resolution of the Council of the City of Santa Barbara establishing city's apportionment limitation for fiscal year 2017. C, a resolution of the Council of the City of Santa Barbara establishing certain city fees and rescinding resolution number 15-053. D, a resolution of the Council of the City of Santa Barbara authorizing classified and unclassified positions in the city service effective June 21, 2016 and providing a schedule of classification and salaries for the same in accordance with the operating budget for the 2017 fiscal year. E, a resolution of the Council of the City of Santa Barbara authorizing the continuation of capital and special project apportionments for fiscal year 2017. F, a resolution of the Council of the City of Santa Barbara establishing administrative guidelines and fines for noise violations pursuant to sections 9, 16.020 and 9.16.030 of the Santa Barbara Municipal Code and G, a resolution of the Council of the City of Santa Barbara establishing waterfront harbor slip mooring and user fees and rescinding resolution 15-055. Thank you. Mr. Samario. Thank you, Madam Mayor, members of Council. I'm Bob Samario. I'm the Finance Director. And we're here for the adoption, adoption of the 2017 recommended budget. And as you know, this is the culmination of about eight months of work on the part of city staff across the organization and council. Um, so we're happy to be here and wrap it all up. And this, this budget will become effective July 1 of uh, next fiscal year. So July 1, 2017, or 16, I should say. So... Um, just a little bit of background for the benefit of the public. This, the, the recommended budget was filed in April of 2016. We had seven public hearings and work sessions where departments presented to city council and the public their respective budgets. And, and of course, we heard comments from the public. And concurrent with that, the Finance Committee had a number of sessions where they looked at more details of certain parts of the budget. Um, and they brought those recommended recommendations to the council on June 1st. So on the June 1st um, meeting, the last one we had on the budget, the council took the following actions. They approved staff recommended adjustments. Those are adjustments to the budget between April and now that we found that were need needed uh, to, based on new information. Um, council also approved an increase to certain planning and, and um, related development fees that totals $47,000.81, and th those are reflected in the budget now that will be adopted. The council also asked us to make reductions to the general fund capital program to fund additional streets funding, and that totaled $809,000. So those numbers are reflected in the adopted budget or will be reflected. And then continuing on, um, council um, approved the addition of a position in the water fund. This has no budgetary impact, and this is for an administrative analyst, too, to assist with grant writing, fist financial management, and rate making just to kind of do deal with overall workload impacts causing, caused by the drought. 
In addition to that, the council approved funding for outside organizations totaling almost $180,000. Specifically, $33,700 um, is to the downtown Santa Barbara, and that's going to come out of the downtown parking fund. We, the council also approved $10,000 for the Coalition Against Gun Violence, and this is, will be absorbed into the police department budget. So we didn't add any appropriations to the police department because it's such a small amount. We, next year, they're just going to find a way to absorb that amount of money. Council also approved 11000 in funding for the 211 hotline, um, and we took this from appropriated reserves in our general fund, so we lowered that slightly. And then finally, $125,000 for PATH, uh, and this is going to come from a reduction in current year fiscal year 2016 capital program. We had some money left over in our FMS replacement project that we're going to use to fund that for 2017. Um, at least for a hundred thousand portion and then twenty five thousand is going to come from additional revenues that we expect this year from the rental housing mitigation fund um, that's interest revenue so that was per council's direction so we have as you you heard a number of resolutions for adoption I want to just go through them very quickly to explain what they are what they're for the first one is very obvious this is going to be adopting all of the pardon um, me um, madam mayor I would be uh, appreciated mr. Smario would not uh, read or discuss in any manner the resolutions dealing with the waterfront in order to avoid having council members uh, Rouse and White leave the room this discussion has to be with respect to everything except item G I guess it is so d don't even mention it please should it go through A through F sure okay and exclude G for now okay okay so again A is adopting the budget this, this is by fund and by department. Item B is establishing what we call the uh, the GAN limit or appropriations limit. This was a, in 1979 a constitutional amendment that is that attempted and was, the point was to try to limit spending of local government and school districts in the state of California as well. Um, this became almost effectively um, had minimal value you now has minimal value because of Prop 111 passed in 1990. But again, the intent was to limit how much the city, cities can spend from um, proceeds of taxes. And um, because the Prop 111 changed the methodology so dramatically, it's no longer really a relevant um, um, uh, requirement. But it is something we have to do every year, establish that appropriation limit. Item C is approving the master fee resolution. This is a one resolution that encompasses all fees citywide, and within that are all the detailed fees by department and by fund. We also have a resolution that establishes all the authorized positions and salary ranges within the city. And then item E is authorizes the city administrator to approve carryovers of certain appropriations from, and this should say from 16 to 17. Uh, this specifically relates to capital projects. So the, the capital projects are approved and funded on, a, on not on an annual basis, but on a multi-year basis. So this gives um, Mr. Mr. Casey the authority to carry over unused appropriations from one year to the next. And it also applies to certain special projects that are, are intended to be multi-year appropriation projects. And then item F is, we called us separately, this is a, the fees related to the noise disturbances. These are new fees we're creating, and this will create a new resolution. In future years, this will be wrapped into the master fee resolution included as part of item C. So here's where we can, we can take separate actions um, given the, um, the, uh, the complex for Mr. White and Mr. Rouse. Uh, first, we do have a public comment speaker slip on... Um the down, downtown parking so well committee so um did you want to okay mr rouse is going to leave for that one we're going to make you come back to vote on a through f though <laughs> mr pinner come on up good afternoon good evening uh, good afternoon madam mayor and members of the council my name is trey pinner i'm the chair of the downtown parking committee um, as you, and I just have a few comments regarding the financing here. As you are preparing to adopt the city budgets, the members of the Downtown Parking Committee, DPC, feel that it is important to highlight a few issues. We realize the difficult decisions that are made during a city's budget process and the huge demands placed on a city to maintain and provide services. As you know, the Downtown Parking System was developed as a city merchant cooperative strategy to combat the anticipated draw of the new Lacumba Plaza shopping center back in the 70s. Today, this parking asset is a vital cog in the economic and cultural machinery of, downtown, of the downtown corridor 
serving businesses, cultural, and government entities. The replacement, of the, the replacement value of this system is well over $100 million in tangible infrastructure, infrastructure assets. With the elimination of the RDA, it is even more apparent that the downtown parking system needs to be careful of taking on too many non-parking related expenses. The long-term financial and ultimately physical risk to the parking asset by being responsible to budget for over a million dollars of expenses not related to the downtown parking system is a significant issue and needs to be understood. As a result of the recommendation of the DPC, the city is in the process of contracting with a consultant for, consulting firm to review the phys physical infrastructure of the downtown parking system and prepare a report of the long-range expected requirements to maintain the system. We must make sure to look, of the long range, look down the road and be prepared to maintain the parking system as the important asset it has become. Operational revenues have traditionally been used to help build reserves to fund the ongoing capital repair and improvement program, the CIP, which is vital, vitally important to maintaining the parking assets. Often considered an enterprise fund, the downtown parking program has generated sufficient revenues to fund all of its operational needs without general fund assistance. The participation by businesses in the parking and business improvement area, PBIA, is an example of a very successful public entity private enterprise partnership which which maintains a real sense of cooperation and ownership in the downtown parking system. You need to wind up, please. Last paragraph. The DP, TPC is uh, committed to making the downtown parking system the very best it can be and to ensure that the businesses, visitors, and residents of the downtown area feel the same way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that concludes the public comment. It's back to the council for any comments and get Mr. Rouse back in here if he's hearing us. Come on, come on back. We need you for items A through F. Yeah, you know. Okay. Any other comments about the budget or Mr. White? Well, thank you, Madam Mayor. I, th I think that the um, the comment that Mr. Samario made about the, the the move of money out of the of capital out of capital funds. Maybe you could even put that slide back up to to, to remind me. Um, the last piece there, the reductions in general fund. A capital program to fund additional streets uh, capital totaling eight eight hundred nine thousand um, dollars. That was it was that was a very painful piece of this process. Uh, our frankly our our paving program prior to this uh, to these moves was around that same scale around eight to nine hundred thousand dollars. And this is on a for a program that needs. Uh, Something like seven million. There was seven million a, a reasonable number, Mr. Eight, Mario. Eight to twelve, I think. Is All right, number. eight to twelve. So we are just not doing it with our streets. And even this, this was a very painful process. Some really neat projects got stalled or put on the back burner in order even to 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 get our our paving uh, program up to uh, just south of of two million dollars. So I wanted to highlight that because. Um, the, the effect of, of that $809,000 was, was very visible throughout the, the city. Really, and, uh, and yet this is the kind of thing which we're in a triage mode with our streets. And we'll be looking at this. Obviously, this is going to be going on until a real form of, of improvement to our funding occurs. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Do you have a motion for items A through F? I'd make that motion, Madam Mayor. White. Any second. second? Second by Rouse. Um, I just want to thank everyone involved in putting this together. It's a uh, second year uh, of the of the two year plan. Next year, obviously, is the beginning of a whole two year two year process. Um, one of the things I've noticed in the last couple of years that perhaps next year is a way to to look at this with new eyes is what is the city's role in terms of funding things as it relates to homelessness and its impact on homelessness? We have restorative policing. We have the CDBG funds. We have the direct funds that go to PATH. We have uh, you know, a variety of different things we do on the enforcement, intervention, and prevention side and in partnership with you know, C3H and other stakeholders. But I don't think we really have had a full conversation about the big picture. And perhaps now is the time to 
look into that as for next year's um, start, working with the downtown Santa Barbara, the chamber, with Faith Grid, you know, all the groups established with that because um, obviously it has a dollar figure to us and it impacts our budget and, and perhaps makes us look to making um, significant changes during the budget process when we don't really have a plan of what this really means on a fiscal level. Um, so that's just some suggestion for next year because it's come up now three or four times each year and without really a bigger conversation. Um, so maybe perhaps through C3H or something, that's something we can work on prior to next year's budget. Um, but with that, I'm very pleased with how this has come together and I agree with Mr. White, we have work to do when it comes to infrastructure in our streets for sure. Okay, anything else? All right, items A through F, all in favor? Aye. Aye. That's unanimous. And then Mr. White and Mr. Rouse, you have to want, you need to explain why you're leaving. Mr. White. In order to avoid appearance of conflict of interest, uh, both Mr. Rouse and I have uh, our slip holders in the harbor, and so need not need to avoid uh, participating in that budget. Okay. Ditto. Thank you. Adios. <laughs> Great. Mr. Smart, did you want to add anything to item G? No. Oh, okay. All right. So it's just approving the waterfront fees. Right. Is there a motion for item G? Move item G, Madam Mayor. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Moved by Mario, second by Hart. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. That's unanimous 5 0 and two abstentions. All righty. Thank you. All right. We have a budget. Thank you very much. Item number 23. Mission Park to Mission Canyon Pedestrian and Bikeway Project. Mr. Dayton. Good afternoon, Madam Mayor and Council Members. Today we want to update you on a project that hasn't been here for a while, but you probably remember the Mission Park to Mission Canyon Pedestrian and Bikeway Project. We want to give you a little bit of background and tell you what the progress to date has been. And then we want to introduce to you another uh, project that's very much related to that, which is the Mission Canyon uh, Road Bridge Rehabilitation Project. And we want to tell you a little bit about that project and then get some direction on where to go with that particular project. The, uh, the Mission Park to Mission Canyon Pedestrian and Bikeway Project has kind of an interesting history in that it was developed by, initiated by an organization that was formerly known as Safe Passage. And then it went through the schedule that you can kind of see up there with a, a memorandum of understanding with the county and coming back to council and the board of supervisors uh, going through a pretty robust community engagement process uh, to boards, our boards and commissions that had a joint uh, planning commission hearing with the county and the city and then came to council uh, with the council finally putting that, making that an official project in our capital improvement program. And just a little bit of more history on that, the um, formerly known as uh, Citizens for Safe Passage, now a Mission Heritage Trail Association, they, they uh, highlighted this corridor as needing uh, improvements to safety, primarily pedestrian, but also a bicycle. And so after uh, that council, coming to council and council initiating us to move forward with the process in partnership with the county, we got a grant to develop the project more. Uh, one of the highlights of that was a listening workshop where we, uh, without presenting any kind of uh, aspirations of what this project should be, we asked some very general questions where everyone got to participate, and those questions are what's important to you, what's not working well or needs fixing, and what needs to be left alone. And you may recall that presentation and, and, and the feedback we got, but just to highlight one aspect of what needs to be left alone and this was the number one thing on the list, was the Mission Creek, uh, the Mission uh, Bridge over Mission Creek, uh, Mission Canyon Bridge over Mission Creek. Uh, there was a lot of comments, variations about the history of the bridge and that it was too sensitive to, to touch. Um, that presented kind of a problem in terms of the project uh, solutions because uh, there's limitations with what you can do on the bridge. You see to the right there the... Uh, pedestrian bridge that was that was added kind of as an afterthought on the side and um, so we had to design something uh, separate uh, from that bridge and so what the, as the project emerged and what went to council and included in the capital improvement program was 
a project that put a separate bridge to the side. And this is looking towards the mission and APS coming along this path here. This is where it gets choked out and there's no room on the westerly side. And uh, this right here is a very, very sensitive piece. This is the, the old uh, aqueduct um, in the area. And so creating a space and moving this wall back so that, so that a bridge could actually go to the side of the, um, the existing bridge, a separate pedestrian bridge, was the, the solution we came up with. You could pedestrian bridge to the westerly side of Mission Creek, Mission Canyon Creek Bridge. Um, then the, well, another thing that was happening was putting the path on the westerly side in front of the K property, and that, this gray area is showing where the roadway would have to be moved over for that. So that was the, that was the process we went through for that project. And then after council incorporated that into the capital improvement program, we did a joint application with the county to try to get the environmental and design money for to initiate the project. As you will recall, there were very there's, this area is very sensitive for historic resources, and environmental uh, impact report is needed to develop all those uh, issues. And so, we the funding source we looked to was the Active Transportation Planning Grant uh, as a source of funding to do that. And unfortunately. We were not successful uh, with that application. The primary, primary reason for that is we are trying to make an argument uh, that this project would account for um, disadvantaged communities in, in that there are many kids that are from disadvantaged communities that are, would use this facility to go from the mission to the museum. Visiting the mission is, is a constant activity throughout the year of many, many schools. Uh, the the state of California didn't like that argument. It uh, really wanted to, uh, so we didn't get those points. That's 10 points. That really puts us behind in, ter in a very competitive process in the state of California. Uh, we After we were turned down on that, we called. We, we did what we could to negotiate further, and we feel like we're not going to be successful in the future with this uh, funding source. So that, that puts this project, that capital project, in, in a kind of a tentative position. We don't feel like at this point there's another funding source. It's, very, it's, it's more expensive than some of our smaller grants, like a measure, a, a measure D grant, or Measure A, sorry. So we feel like we've, we've kind of done all we can until new, new funding sources come. So that's the update on that project. And then to introduce this other project, Mission Canyon Bridge Road Re Rehabilitation Project, it's very, very uh, related to uh, the other project. This is a, the Highway Bridge Program. You're familiar with this. It's a Caltrans grant. It fixes bridges that are deficient, and it funds about 80 to 85 percent of the of the bridge um, addressing the bridge deficiency. Uh, these are the. This is a list of the bridges that uh, that have been that either have been replaced or are going to be replaced. I think there's probably more. Uh, you'll recall the uh, Chapala Street Bridge. Um, I think you, the more recent ribbon cutting you did was on the Coda Bridge. And this is the Coda Bridge as a rendering before it was uh, finished. So that's the bridge program. And while this particular bridge, this is a looking at the underside, underside of Mission Canyon Road um, bridge across Mission Creek, while the bridge is actually uh, sound, it's structurally sound, that's the good news, uh, there are some deficiencies that it has. And to go over what they are, as you approach the bridge, and that's the, the bridge in the, the background there, as we're, lo we're looking north, as you approach the bridge, the, as you can tell, the road disappears to the left. The radii going onto the bridge is shorter than is the uh, standard. And so what happens is we do, uh, because of this, uh, is shorter than standard, we do get collisions. You can see 
uh, right here, the sandstone looks a little newer. That's because it does get hit from time to time. We've had three collisions in 10 years, not quite a, not quite a strong pattern, uh, but uh, one that it, it could be fixed. And then the other deficiency in terms of uh, the bridge is, is the width itself. So um, the width right now onto the bridge is uh, 33 feet. And uh, to be a standard width that the um, state would like to see would be 39. So the, that invo would involve actually widening the bridge. So that's, those are two deficiencies. And then the last deficiency is coming the other direction. Uh, we're at Puesto del Sol here on the, the right. And then as we go into this s curb we would get to the bridge. So the roadway approaching the bridge, these two radii coming into here are also uh, substandard. They're too tight. And if you look at the area with the cone right here, that is an area that um, that wall gets hit pretty frequently. That is a, a pretty repeated. It's nine collisions in 10 years uh, that hit that wall. And it's primarily not just the radius, but if you can kind of see here what we call super elevation is where the road tilts toward into the turn. This, this actually tilts away from the turn, which uh, out of this straightaway downhill is adding to the problem. To address this issue, uh, it, it actually is very, very similar to the, the previous project we were talking about. The, these radii right here would have to be widened. This would be uh, widened, so less tight. This, will, this one would be widened or made more broad so that the, so the uh, motorists aren't turning as tight. And then that also affords uh, more generous walking on the westerly side. Uh, the bridge would be widened uh, to accommodate that. Now, the, this bridge uh, fund also accounts for pedestrian access as well. So if we were to widen this bridge, we could also account for an additional sidewalk. So looking at kind of what that would look like, um, and this is, again, this is a very preliminary drawing, and this is making a lot of assumptions, too. This is assuming that we'd be widening to the west, um, and, and we, we're, not, we're not far along to know exactly if that's the, you know, the right thing to do, whether it's the west or it's the other side. Um, but this, th this design would correct the radius problem and the width problem. But what this shows right here is the, the width going from 33 feet to 44 feet, and that would accommodate a six-foot path of some amount. Making the radius bigger around the aqueduct and then widening the bridge and then also accounting for the radius next to the stegosaurus wall. Just to give you an idea, and this is really, really rough, but um, again, this is accounting for a westerly widening. It would get about um, uh, 11 feet wider to the west. Again, that's picking the west if we were going to choose and follow the other project. So going through the process, we would go, we would have to go through this very similar in terms of environmental review. There would be a similar process in terms of public outreach. We anticipate there would be significant impacts to historic resources. Um, the, while the bridge has been widened in the past before, uh, it would have to be done very carefully in terms of making it look as though it was always that width, which I think when you see it today, the, the people that widened it before accomplished that. Um, th these are the prices. We think that, you know, and this is really ballpark, 8 to $10 million for the total project. There are city matches associated with this. It's not a 100% grant, and we estimate that could be somewhere between $1 and $2 million. I, I think our, our hesitancy on, on this is that when we heard from the public the first time is that the number one thing we heard was don't touch the bridge. So um, when we approach, that's why we're coming to, to you at this time with this uh, question and, and needing direction is we have this we have this money to address these deficiencies. Um, it doesn't need, the bridge does not need replacing. That's a good thing. Uh, would you like us to uh, go ahead and move forward with the intention to widen the bridge, uh, going through the, the environmental process, processes, 
uh, uh, and, and intending to go forward, or would you like to forego the bridge re re rehabilitation grant because of the, uh, what we've already heard from the public? So that concludes my remarks. I believe uh, Matt Daubertine from the county, our partner, should be here any moment. He may be a running a little late, but he's our partner at the county to answer questions from the county side. And then also uh, Brian Demore, the city engineer, can answer any questions regarding the uh, bridge fund. Thank you. Any questions? Mr. Hotchkiss. <coughs> What's the staff recommendation on this? Madam Mayor, Councilmember Hotchkiss, I think we're struggling with this one. Um, having been in the room at the time, um, and it was very strong from the community, we had about 70, 70 to 80 members in that room. Uh, it was the number one thing to, to not touch. The, the entire pr project was driven, uh, drove us to not even address the bridge at that time. So I think we're, we're shy on not doing it. We're shy on moving forward. We, we, we kind of side with the public. In opposition. That's right. Um, what, what you describe is, I guess, three deficiencies. I'm not sure that was the right term, but whatever the curve on one side and the other and the width. And I think another way of looking at it, if I had Mr. Bailey here, he would say those are three traffic calming measures. Oh, what's the expected effect if we remove those? vis-a-vis -vis speed, is it, can we make a projection? Madam Mayor, Council Member Hotchkiss, whenever you widen uh, the radius of a road, that makes it a faster road. Um, the 85th percentile uh, folks who are driving on the road are unlikely to have a, a collision. It's the folks that are driving over the speed limit now that are, are, are more likely to have that collision. Um, so some portion of the population we can anticipate will speed up if we do widen the radius. And the speed limit is, what, 35 now? I believe it's 35 uh, in the county and 30 coming away from the city. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Maria? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Mr. Dayton, is there a reason that Mr. Bailey is not here today? I, he always gives us advice about when people speed and what will cause accidents. Uh, Madam Mayor, Councilmember Maria, I'm sorry that he's not here. If uh, if if you'd like him here, I can I can uh, send a text his way. Uh, by the time public uh, comments over, we might be able to have him here. Thank you. So you said something in your presentation, Mr. Dayton, that the West Pathway. You said we're not sure about that. You were just referring to um, making changes to the bridge. That that's what you meant. Can you clarify when you say the west? Yeah, you, you were saying er, just earlier when you were talking about doing something, yeah, on the, on the west side, you just said we're, you were not sure about that or um, I, maybe, maybe, I didn't, maybe I didn't hear you correctly. Madam Mayor, I, I mean, I thought this had been vetted and people had talked about what's the best way to make safety changes, so... So putting a footbridge on the west side was something, a conclusion that you came to. Isn't that right? Madam Mayor, Councilman Murillo, uh, the other project, yes, we came to a conclusion on the, conclusion on the westerly side for the pedestrian access. And that is why we're showing a westerly widening in this direction. That's right, because of that process. We're just saying that there are, there are multiple ways to... So solve this issue, and we're pointing out one here, but we haven't gotten into the design and, and, a, broad, and a greater detail of, of exactly how we would proceed, looking at the structure of the bridge, looking at the rails. Uh, but certainly this is, this is probably a, a good a first foot forward based on the process that we've had to date. Okay. I, I have other questions, but I'm going to formulate them more carefully. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Mr. Hart. So the staff report says that... Um, the bridge program requires an 11.47% match and that the city's contribution to that would be in the five dollars to $600,000 range. But the PowerPoint presentation talks about an eight to $10 million cost and a one to $2 million, eight to $10 million total construction cost and a one to $2 million city contribution cost. 
and also talks about an 80 to 85 percent match. Those two don't match up. Which is it? Uh, Madam Mayor, Council Member Hart, uh, good question. Um, thank you for raising that question. Uh, Rob and I were talking about that this morning. And uh, officially, the Highway Bridge Program pays for 88.53% of eligible project costs. So 88.53 is not a number we typically uh, include when the estimate right now is very rough. So it's, it's going to fall uh, somewhere under that. There will be some non-participating costs. So I think we, we put a conservative number out there, and we're still uh, trying to assess what the total project cost would be. Um, if we have to widen on both sides of that bridge, it's going to be a whole lot more expensive than if we can focus the widening just on one side. But there's still so much that uh, needs to go into um, scoping out the project before we can uh, address those costs. So w we've th thrown a range in there, and the number that was in the staff report uh, was preliminary. Rob and I looked at it again uh, today, and uh, that's what you see in the PowerPoint. Uh, but regardless, it's a rough, very rough estimate at this point. Okay, so the first step is to refine the scope and to do the preliminary environmental design to have a better cost estimate to know more precisely what it is this is ultimately going to cost. And are those expenses potentially non-reimbursable expenses or some portion, greater portion of those? Because the staff report does say that those are eligible costs um, and that there is a future decision after having done the environmental work and the design work and the cost estimates where there's a decision point to not necessarily, to, we could choose to not proceed at that point um, and would still be reimbursed for, I assume, the 88.5% um, of eligible expenses. So just I want to need to understand is the, what's the risk of the first step of this process financially to the city? Madam Mayor, uh, Council Member Hart, uh, Caltrans has told us that uh, everything up to the point of a decision that comes out of a community process on what this project is going to be, even if the uh, selection is a no-build project, if we just walk away and say community just can't support this if it requires altering that bridge, they've told us that that would be all of the work that would go into that is eligible under the grant at the 88.53. So okay, we do have that from them. And you're thinking the staff report again talks about the hundred to hundred and fifty thousand dollar range for those costs. Or am I taking that out of context? What what is what is the assumed amount of money that it would take to get to that decision to go to no go? And what is the city's proportion of that in that right. formula? Um, I'm trying to find the the point in the staff report where it calls that. Okay, it's right here at the end. Um, yeah, I think that would be fairly fairly accurate. The 100 to 150. So it would it would take hiring a consultant who could analyze this in great detail for us, put exhibits together, probably some more community meetings, um, and so I think the number that's in there is accurate. So that's going to give us, you know, a really in-depth historical evaluation. It's going to give us a design. It's going to give us um, a community process. It's going to give us um, schematic views of it, architectural renderings, so that people can really understand what the product is at the end. Obviously, the goal would be to make it um, appear as though it, it hadn't been reconstructed, that it was historically appropriate and accurate as was the previous widening and so having that information you're you're saying is it going to be in the hundred and hundred fifty thousand dollar range total cost so that the city's portion of that is eleven percent or this is the city's share of the larger yeah, design that, environment <clears throat> madam mayor council member hart the one hundred to one hundred and fifty thousand is the um, city share uh, for that. Okay, thank you. Mr. White. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, can we go back to the ATP slide?
Okay, so that's the, yeah, right, okay. Um, I'm thinking of the couple of projects in, in the rest of the city where there were accidents and that, uh, that after, subsequent to the accidents, projects have been uh, created and funded. Can you describe that process? Is that the case? Am I, is that just m- me uh, remembering those things and they're not accurate? Or is there a connection between those accidents and projects, uh, pedestrian safety projects being funded? Madam Mayor, Councilmember White, the, are you talking about with the active transportation planning grant or any of the grants we have? We have, we have a couple of safety grants. Uh, Mr. Bailey has been very successful uh, with the, when we have collisions and we have identified a pattern, um, we have applied for the, the safety grants and got them, and he has been very successful at mitigating those. A great example of that one is at the corner of Carrillo and Anacapa where we put the the uh, the mast arm in over so the so that it was better clarity for both directions and that collision pattern has uh, stopped since we did that improvement. And then I'm thinking about is it Las Positas is one and Modoc or Cliff another uh, are those those pedestrian projects in that area are they accident related in any way? Oh, I see. I think I understand what you're saying. You're you're referring referring to the eight. ATP applications that we have in, and maybe the Modoc, Las Positas. Some of them are, um, particularly where we have crossings. Uh, we did have a, a, a pedestrian uh, death on on um, what used to be the Caltrans Highway on Las Positas, um, and that did uh, uh, help the scoring for when we got the, the design for that project. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Dominguez? I want to do uh, back out a little bit and look at the uh, the role this bridge is going to play in the in the bigger project we have with transportation in the area, and whether or not this is going to commit us to an east side of the bridge or west side of the bridge pedestrian pathway. Can you give us a little more um, background how this would fit in with a with a greater vision for this area? Sure. Just looking for the best slide. So, Madam Mayor, Councilmember Dominguez, uh, one of the things that that we heard about in the process was that this area, uh, going from Foothill to the Mission, is very challenging for walking and um, safe passage, which is what the, the community members who organized to address this were originally looking at, and. In the bigger scheme of things, this creates a, a passage for Mission Canyon residents and those that are living above Foothill to get down to the mission. It's, it's a, the mission and the historic uh, park, which is the lawn, our favorite places to visit and to recreate. And then also there is a great deal of walking activity that happens between the mission and the museum, which is on Plaza del Sol which would be uh, down this roadway right here with the mission being over here and, and the museum being over here. And so there's a lot of traffic uh, to and from between those two points because they're points of interest. And so people are commonly trying to walk between the two. We also have a Rocky Nook Park in the area, uh, which is right here, which is also a favorite destination. So while you have a lot of uh, people who are wanting to walk in the area, um, many will say, for, for many different reasons, for safety and then also for the lack of a continuous path that it's, it's challenging, uh, we'll avoid doing it. And uh, the, the challenge in our history is that this is also probably one of the most sensitive places for, of our community for uh, historic resources. And so I think that uh, the solution has not emerged until recent time because of the challenges uh, with historic resources in this area. There, there are many uh, very, very significant uh, landmarks for the city, and then also the creek, uh, the ecological habitat. It's, it's all um, very um, sensitive. Is that helpful? That, that's helpful. So do we have a, um, a sense of what the overall plan, do we have a specific plan for this area? Have we had a community process that sets those goals? Because it seems haphazard or piecemeal to to commit to a project here, especially given the, the dollar figures involved, 
and then come back and say, well, this isn't exactly what met the goals of getting people to these points of interest with safety, getting people out of Mission Canyon into downtown Santa Barbara with safety. We're talking about fires and potentially earthquakes. Is this going to be a bottleneck for people if it, if it stays the way it is? Because I think we really want to see what the local community and the greater community of Santa Barbara wants to see out of this before we commit to the individual pieces. Madam Mayor, Councilmember Dominguez, aside from the, the challenge of what's before us today, the question about whether we should even touch the bridge, the, the other project had a lot of community uh, building uh, and development within community processes. I would say it was very weighty on the side of community process uh, with many uh, meetings right at the bridge at the Women's uh, League there and then... Um, and then uh, many other meetings at the county level and at the city. Uh, and so there was quite a bit of process that, to develop the project you see right here uh, on, the, on the map. And was there a clear consensus on a, on a plan for the, for the area? Or is it still more of a divided or unclear consensus? There is controversy about this project. Um, at the end of the day, council decided to put it in the uh, capital improvement project. Uh, but we do get emails about it and correspondence about it frequently on on both sides of people who are you know very concerned about the uh, the sensitive uh, historical resources in the area and those people who would want to see something happen uh, with with a continuous path. And so, and having I've gone out there and actually talked to some of the residents, and it seems to me that this is kind of the bottleneck, literally, physically, the bridge. And is that the most strategic component of the transportation in this area? I would say the answer to that is yes. This is the area that is the most challenging to, to get through. Uh, other areas do have beaten paths. Uh, while it's not an ADA accessible by any means, um, this area provides the most challenge, primarily, too, if you're, if you're going from the Mission to the Museum, which is a very common path that you're crossing Mission Canyon um, you know, twice uh, rather than staying on the same side of the street where you wouldn't have to cross. Which imposes problems for all forms of transportation. We get many complaints about a motorist yielding uh, or lack of yielding on Mission Canyon. So given the, the environmental difficulties of um, solving the problem and the historical sensitivity, um, has there been a thought to incorporate a larger plan before coming back to us with this, or would that help your decision making to step back and look at a bigger decision making process or set of goals that this would be a smaller part of? Uh, Banner Mayor, Councilmember Dominguez, I feel like we've done quite a bit of uh, to date already to know you know what the what the pieces are. Um, and I think our, our challenges, and this is what we're relating to the council, why we're here today, is that we're challenged by the fact that in the community process, the community was pretty resoundingly not to, said no to not touch the, the, the mission, the, the bridge over Mission Creek. And so uh, this is a challenging point, and we want to come to you for this decision about whether to move forward and with the intention of, of widening the bridge or to forego those funds. Thank you. So uh, on the bridge replacement, I heard correctly, or tell me again, the issue about the stegosaurus wall and the other wall about the need to move or not move them. You do still need to move them if you widen the bridge on the west side. Is that correct? Yes, Madam Mayor. Um, with the bridge widening, uh, we imagine that those walls would still have to move. Okay. And can you explain why... So at, to date, we've really only looked at the west side of the bridge and not the east side of the bridge. Absolutely. In the community process, uh, one of the biggest challenges that uh, community members uh, voiced was the challenge of crossing the street. So in, in, this, in this particular setting, if we do an easterly path and you are in the, to, to the north and the south, the path is, is on the westerly side. So if you're coming from the mission, you're crossing at the crosswalk at APS, 
uh, and then you're crossing APS, and that, that's to an island, so you're crossing it twice, and then you're crossing Mountain, then you're crossing the driveway at Rocky Nook, and then you're crossing back at um, Placid del Sol. So that's a lot of crossings uh, that one has to make when, if we stay on the westerly side, we can avoid all those crossings, uh, which are conflicts, which is depending upon what kind of pedestrian you are, it's different for everybody. Some people are a little bit more uh, not shy about crossing. Uh, but some people do complain about it quite a bit about the lack of yielding. So staying to the westerly side, if we're going to spend all this money, uh, we believe will be the most successful in the public's eye when we're done in terms of uh, safety and ability to use the pedestrian path that we've created. Okay. And I see Mr. Daubertine um, came in. Uh, if you could actually come up, and you were mentioned before uh, able to come in. Can you just describe to us what kind of outreach the county has done, including any public hearings through your um, HLC or the County Board of Supervisors? I mean, what, what's, what's happened at the county level in terms of public outreach on this project? Thank you. Madam Mayor, members of the council, uh, thank you for your time today on this item. So the county has been an active partner collaborating with the city of Santa Barbara on this project uh, since the beginning. And after the uh, completion of the draft uh, Mission Canyon, uh, get the right name for the plan, the Mission Canyon uh, access plan. Sorry. just want to get the right, uh, we've got a lot of terms uh, going around here. So it's the Mission, Mission Park to Mission Canyon Pedestrian and Bikeway Project. Thank you. So at the, at the closure of that planning effort, um, the, the County Planning Commission held a joint, uh, joint meeting with your Planning Commission uh, at the County of Santa Barbara. The idea was that since we had shared jurisdiction over that area, it would be best to have the two commissions sit in the same room together to hear each other's thoughts. Uh, following that meeting, we then took the plan forward to the County Board of Supervisors. Uh, that was a noticed public hearing. They took action on the plan similar to your council to place the projects that were identified in the county's jurisdiction in the county's uh, capital improvement plan. And since that series of events occurred approximately two years ago, uh, there's been no further formal meetings by the county. Um, I believe your, commission, your council asked for one more public meeting uh, that was held approximately six months later, and county staff attended that meeting as well. Thank you. There we go. Uh, Mr. Hart? I just wanted to add some um, historical context for Councilmember Dominguez, I think, that might be helpful. This, this, ha this area, generally speaking, has a very long... over beyond 90 degrees over your shoulder to see cars coming down Mission Canyon. That, that had a lot of traction from folks that were interested in improving pedestrian safety in the neighborhood, ran into some um, historical resources problems and kind of foundered. And then the Safe Passage Community Organization about five years ago took up this challenge again to try and do a comprehensive pedestrian and transportation access uh, plan for the whole area, including that roundabout and going all the way down to the mission, in front of the mission, um, in front of the Rose Garden, all the way up to Foothill Road, and had a huge, um, very comprehensive plan that was shopped to in these listening sessions that Mr. Dayton referred to. Um, and I think tactically it was decided that that was too big to contemplate and to do, so that it was shrunk down to a smaller version um, that was the $6 million project that was the subject of the ATP grant. And now I think we're at the point where that having not been successful, this is a different approach to try and take pieces of this much larger project that are fundable. Because if you look at the entire project as one, which I think is what you were sort of speaking to, doesn't that make more sense as a planning process, then um, it's just too big to fund. And so this is, this is a bite that's digestible. And there, there, as Mr. Dayton mentioned, and we're going to hear from all the members of the public, there definitely are two schools of thoughts as to whether or not to even sit down at the table to have that meal. And that's what we're going to hear more about. But I just wanted you to, to have some of that context um, for your edification. 
Thank you. Ms. Mario, uh, Mr. Bailey's here. Did you have any questions for him or other yes, questions at this point? And Mr. Bailey, I'm, I'm grateful for you coming over. Thanks. So it says here that straightening the approaches will increase speeds as people come to the bridge from either direction. Is, is that your opinion? Madam Mayor, Councilmember Mario, um, coming from the city going north towards the county, I, I wouldn't expect much difference at all. Um, this, the speeds are really controlled by um, the, the curves that lead up towards the vicinity of the bridge, so there, there really isn't much opportunity to, to get ahead of steam up before you get to the bridge as you're, as you're coming from the city okay. going north. Okay. Uh, coming south, like from Foothill down Mission Canyon towards the, towards the bridge, um, definitely smoothing out the curves can increase speed. Uh, but really when, when um, the Federal Highway Administration funds these types of projects to um, kind of correct def in uh, deficient curves leading up to bridge bridges re really the intent is to allow drivers to have more control so e even though you're uh, you may be introducing curves that are a little bit more generous and can accommodate uh, higher speeds the the drivers will be in in more control so uh, ideally what you would have is you're coming down from mission canyon it's a 35 mile an hour road <clears throat> is you would have a series of curves that get a little bit tighter and a little bit tighter as you get towards the towards the bridge and really encourage drivers to reduce their speeds in a controlled way as they're uh, getting towards the bridge and what what happens right now is drivers are coming down from foothill 35 miles an hour and they get to that first curve right at Puesta del Sol and it's a 25 mile an hour sub 25 mile an hour curve and so the the speeds the drivers are driving coming down Mission Canyon just don't match that curve so the idea would be just to gently uh, introduce some speed control to drivers that was my next question yeah. if if you change the approaches can you do something so that they so that you slow them down a little bit and you're saying yes yes but it it may not be um quite what people are expecting that that first curve uh near puesta del sol uh would likely have a little bit higher speeds going through it okay uh just because um ideally you want to match that 35 mile an hour speed coming down from mission can i'm not saying the speeds through the curve would be 35 miles an hour but going from 35 to sub 25 is is quite a drop and that's why we're seeing collisions at that location in, in part so um uh, you'd introduce a, a, a gentle curve and then a tighter curve closer to the bridge, and that's how you gradually reduce speeds as you get closer to the bridge. Okay, so there's the conditions now, and then there's the conditions that we're thinking about making. So the conditions now, it, is there a collision? It's a, does something need to be fixed? Madam Mayor, Councilman Mario, yes. Um, it, it does. The, the county does have uh, an active um, project to make some safety improvements at that curve. I know, Matt, if you want to talk about that. But um, what, what the county is planning will address the pattern of collisions that they've seen. Uh, it still won't um, uh, introduce the, the curves to make the bridge um, sufficient. But but it, what they're doing will address the collisions that are happening. So. Okay. 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 Madam Mayor, Commissioner. Uh, sorry, Council Member Maria. Um, there's there's sort of two scales of projects that can be done in that area. The county has already completed the more minor uh, types of improvements there. One is uh, enhancing the signage there to alert motorists to uh, the curve right before the bridge. And then the second is, and we've done this in some other areas of the county, um, where we've roughed up the pavement um, so that the vehicles have enhanced traction as they go through the curve. We found that to be effective in areas where uh, people sometimes have a difficulty in controlling the vehicle through the corner. Um, then you get to the, to the higher cost improvements like the, uh, like the improvements that are shown to you today uh, where you're doing uh, full-blown road reconstruction, uh, realignments of the curves. That's very expensive and currently the county has no known source of funding to be able to execute those improvements. So we've, we've done basically as much as we can in that area. Well, I think we're low on funds too, which will be part of our, our decision making and then 
the sanctity of the bridge and its historical um, soundness, I guess that, that, that'll be part of what we talk about too. But in turn, okay, so we talked about cars, and so bikes and pedestrians, they're, they're uncomfortable going through there now, and this harkens me back to the bicycle master plan. Yes, I mentioned it, that um, uh, more people would use it if it were safer. Mr. Bailey, can you comment on that? I mean, more bikes and more, more pedestrians, do you think? Madam Mayor, Councilmember Mario, uh, yes, I believe more people would use the bridge, um, not, not just the bridge, the corridor, yes. uh, if, if there were more space available for bikes and pedestrians. Um, right now, we, we do have a bike lane on the city side of the bridge. It's uh, the bare minimum width. And uh, then as you go over the bridge, obviously things start getting pinched down. And as you get into the county, then um, you're, you're riding on what's, what's left of the shoulder. And uh, obviously for, for pedestrians, there, there isn't um, a continuous alignment um, that they can walk on. So, um, yeah, once those facilities uh, would be in place, we would expect more users. And if it's on the west side, Mr. Bailey, then the pedestrians who are trying to get, like, from the Rose Garden and the Mission Park, it, it's that APS area in there that's frightening. I mean, I walked there today, and I felt like I was darting across the street to, to cross where the olive trees are and stuff. Mm -hmm. so, that, so that's an argument for, it, for the pathway to be on the west side, right? It is, and um, in addition to what Mr. Dayton mentioned uh, a minute ago, the um, if, you, if you look up on the screen here where it says Photo 2, right where Mountain Drive comes into uh, uh, Los Olivos right there, um, that there's a, there's a pinch point right there that also makes it very challenging to get any sort of um, accessible path, pedestrian pathway through on the east side. Uh, the old reservoir is, is on that corner, and there's a corner of that reservoir that sticks out. And um, yeah. w without removing some of that reservoir, there is no way to get a pedestrian pathway through there. So that, that's another obstacle. Okay. But on the other hand, one of the things that you always say is that the more uncomfortable people are, the more they slow down and be careful, right? So that's another thing we should think about. It's a balancing act. Um, obviously, the insufficient curves are a way to make people feel uncomfortable. But, um, you know, based on the collision history, it's causing collisions. Um, so, yes, um, providing nice curves, but at the same time, creating an environment that doesn't feel too wide open. I think landscaping would be really key if a project were to move forward in order to create an, a corridor that just doesn't feel like it's in the middle of Kansas and you can drive 80 miles an hour. Um, you know, I, you know it, it, it's, a, it's a real balancing act and it's a very sensitive area and it would take a very sensitive design to do it right. Thank you, and I'm glad you came, and it wasn't that I didn't trust Mr. Dayton's expertise, but that's your specialty, so thank you. Thank you. Mr. White. <clears throat> thank you, Madam Mayor. A couple of follow-ups on, on my previous area of questions. On the ATP, I'll use that term for that, uh, that particular project, would, if that were funded, would that provide uh, pedestrian bike access without changing the bridge? Madam Mayor, Council Member White, yes, that's correct. Okay, so that, that would, is that, if we had gotten that funded, and remember we were only asking for the design and an environmental phase, so it wasn't going to guarantee construction, but as we did with the Las Pesitas Modoc, we put in the application that the ATP source would be our source of funds for construction. But yes, it, without widening the bridge, that uh, project had a separate uh, bridge. Okay. And then, thank you. And then, secondly, on the highway bridge program, my recollection is that that program takes, uh, the city ponied up money, and I, I noticed that the Cabrillo Bridge didn't get in that list, and that is one of the highway, and yeah, the big kahuna. Um, in any case, that, that the money that, that the, the city share has uh, gone forward and then I guess it's when the real estate's been sold that the city has gotten back its its share its its 
its 11.1723% uh, share of that money. So is, this, is, that, is that a revolving fund that's, that brings forward money that would be available for this project? Uh, Madam Mayor, Council Member White, uh, the Highway Bridge Program does fund acquisition of properties if they're necessary in order to construct the bridge. And we've done that uh, on both the Coda Street Bridge and the Mason Street Bridge. Um, so we conservatively budgeted a certain amount of income that we were going to anticipate at the time of selling those properties and uh, basically borrowed from ourselves uh, in advance of those property sales in order to fund construction of Coda Bridge, of the Mason Bridge, and uh, also for the Cabrillo Bridge. So we believe, because the market has gone up since those properties were acquired, we've already sold the three Coda Street properties, and those came in higher than what, we, what the purchase price was. So that's going to help. Uh, the Mason property... We're really hopeful uh, we'll come in quite a bit higher than what we had paid for it and, and what we had borrowed from ourselves in anticipation of those sales. So uh, it's hard to say on one piece of property what you're going to get um, when it goes to the market, but um, right now we're not banking on that. We don't have any funds identified for our city match for this project. Okay, thank you. Mr. Hotchkiss, and then we'll go to public comment. Thank you, Madam Mayor. You talk about the collision history, sir. What is the collision history? Specific numbers? Okay. Um, Madam Mayor, Council For what period of time? Hotchkiss. Uh, for uh, the last 10-year period, yeah. um, there's been nine collisions uh, coming down Mission Canyon Road and not negotiating that first turn by Puesta del Sol. Less than one a year, but keep going. Right. And then um, coming north uh, from the mission, from the city, uh, going north towards the county, there's been three right in that area that uh, Rob's uh, holding the cursor, just uh, just at the entrance to the bridge. Okay. So three it's from the really, city direction. and Would, would you call this from, as an egregious area? Um, certainly not compared to some of the patterns that we have in the city. Oh. Um, you know, any any collision that we can correct, we prefer to, sure. but, um, you know, there, there's a lot of things to consider. One thing we haven't talked about at all is when you see where Mountain Drive is there, twice a day there's great traffic coming down Mountain Drive and going up Mountain Drive, and any increase in speed, as far as I know, or can, anecdotally would say, because I come down there, makes it a really tough proposition. Mm -hmm. So... Whereas the numbers, I don't know what the numbers are, probably 1,000 or 1,500, maybe less, coming down Mountain Drive, people coming to and from Marymount with their kids in the car have a real challenge. And if we increase any speed, at least as I see it down there, it makes the challenge that, that much more difficult. Am I incorrect? Uh, Madam Mayor, Councilmember Hotchkiss, um, no, the, it, it, the higher the speed on the main street, the more challenging it can be to uh, get onto that street from the minor street. Um, I wouldn't expect much change of any in speeds on the southern end of the bridge. I think if we do see any changes in speeds, um, it's going to be up more towards Puesta del Sol. And then by the time uh, drivers get to the bridge itself, um, I think they will basically see what you have today. Right. Well, sort of what we have is a 19th century problem that we're trying to cure in the 21st century because this was, once upon a time, a horse route and then a um, wagon trail um, with, you know, it's in the, the resultant good and bad things that go with that. So I personally am not sure we should need to straighten this out, but we'll see what the council wants to do. Thank you. I think it's 18th century, actually, right? You can, I'm sure there's plenty of people here who can let me know exactly that. And with that, we're going to public, con uh, public comment. We have two minutes here at this um, podium, and we'll start with Erica Shargi to be followed by Frank Frost. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <clears throat> um, oh, excuse me. Honorable Madam Mayor, members of the City Council, my name is Erica Shargi. 
I am a board member of the Mission Canyon Association. I am here today to speak as an individual who lives on Lower Mission Canyon Road. It really takes just one pedestrian accident to mar the pristine and historical aesthetics of the Mission to Foothill Corridor. Each day, the amount of traffic can be overwhelming. It is a major artery for commercial businesses, as well as the normal residential and commuter flow of automobiles and motorcycles. The road is well-traveled by pickups, dump trucks carrying tons of dirt and rocks, cement trucks, trailer trucks carrying heavy equipment, supplies, moving trucks, a host of delivery trucks, as well as buses loaded with tourists coming into and departing Santa Barbara. The speed limit is 35 miles per hour, but you wouldn't know it by the flow of traffic at times. Although at times congestion slows the traffic down, it is very common for automobiles, pickups, and motorcycles to use this stretch of pavement as though it was the straightaway on the, um, on the Indy 500. That is, of course, until they reach the curves between Puesta del Sol to the mission. Here is where the tight turning handling of vehicles and driver are tested at all times of the day without regard to human life. On a number of occasions, I have witnessed drivers while in the turn, crossing the middle line due to excessive speed and or trying to avoid pedestrians or bikers on either side of the road. Are we just waiting for a fatality to happen? Santa Barbarans have immense pride in their ancestry and the legacy entrusted to them. However, our ancestors did not have to deal with the accelerated technological advances by which we lead our lives today. Change is inevitable and the mission to Foothill Corridor, as it is today, has outlived its usefulness when viewed purely under the principles of preserving the past in situ. We must achieve a balance between preserving the past and yet still act responsible on preventive and safety measures desperately needed today for one of the most scenic corridors in California. You need to wind up, please. Last sentence. I respectfully request Madam Mayor and members of the City Council to consider all available resources and opportunities of funding that will create a safe patches for pedestrians in and around the mission and along, and along Mission Canyon Road before trust and confidence in doing what is right is lost. Thank you very much for your consideration. That was a 15-second last sentence, but that's all right. That's good. Thank you very much. Okay, Frank Frost and Visanti, Fithian, you're ceding your two minutes to Mr. Frost. Okay, so Mr. Frost, you have up to... Four minutes, and you'll be followed by Paulina Kahn. Good afternoon. Madam Mayor, members of the council. I've lived in the Mission Canyon area, with a few exceptions, uh, since I got out of the Army in 1953. I know people are going to do the math, and yeah, you're right. <laughs> it's a long time ago. Um, I'm speaking today for the Coalition to Preserve Mission Canyon. And uh, to give it a little historical perspective, when I was on the Board of Supervisors back in the 70s, um, we all had different opinions. We didn't get, we certainly didn't get along with each other, but there was one thing we agreed on. We would look, when staff came up with a brilliant idea, Groups of citizens would come up with a brilliant idea. We'd all look at each other and we would say under our breaths, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And that is, that is the, my opinion, and that is what I'm um, proposing today, is that you stop spending money on a project that is never going to be built. Uh, and... The, the question has come up of cost, <clears throat> and I might say that the Upper East Side is one of the highest income areas in all of Santa Barbara, unless maybe the Montecito part of the city. <clears throat> so consider, are you going to spend that money on sort of a boutique remodel of a wealthy district? And those of you who represent districts in the rest of Santa Barbara, uh, consider maybe uh, there are bigger traffic problems, bigger pedestrian problems, uh, bigger 
hazards in other parts of the city that you might want to address first. Thank you. Thank you. Paulina Kahn will be followed by Lanny Ebenstein. Good afternoon, Madam Mayor and members of the City Council. My name is Paulina Kahn. I live in Mission Canyon. I walk there all the time. There is huge community opposition. I belong to the Coalition to Preserve Mission Canyon. We have over 200 members, uh, three city former council members, and Frank Frost was a former uh, Board of Supervisors. We have four former Mission Canyon Association members, too, that see this traffic problem as not a traffic problem. Well, it is a traffic problem. We need to slow traffic down. <clears throat> Uh, Public Works tried in 1954, 1970, and again in 2000 to put a road in or through the part of the Mission Historic Park City and State Historic Landmark 309 and failed to get support for the project. Please don't spend millions of dollars to try to do it again. There will be more dangerous road crossings to get to Rocky Nook Park if this west side bridge is put in because there will not be any access to Rocky Nook Park from the city on the east side. It's a huge unnecessary expense. <clears throat> with no guarantee of improved safety. Please slow traffic down. We can do that with vegetation, boulders, narrow the road visually. The curves already help. Maybe, and roughening up the road has helped too. I think we will see many fewer accidents coming south on Mission Canyon Road. Uh, many of us have asked for a stop sign at Los Encinas and Public Works says no. Um, I guess that will do. Thank you very much. Thank you. Lanny Ebenstein will be followed by Ray Smith. Mayor Schneider, members of the council, thank you for your service to our community. This is an important issue. It's been before you before, and uh, depending on your vote today, it'll, it'll be before you again. Uh, some of the earlier speakers have uh, indicated there are hundreds of people who oppose this project. There are differences on the facts that are being presented, but one fact that's absolutely clear is that everyone in the community has said, don't touch the bridge. If this city council votes today to begin a planning process, well, maybe it'll work out. Maybe there's a way that we can, we, can, we can touch the bridge. We can widen it by 11 feet as part of a larger plan and so forth. I think that more hundreds of people in the community are going to become involved in this issue because these are the most important historic sites in Santa Barbara, and the plans that have been put forward would be very detrimental to them. Um, I, I regret that this process has evolved the way that it has in terms of uh, that there are a number of factual issues that, that should be able to be resolved. For example, would we lose eastern side pedestrian access? Some members of the community actually think that eastern side pedestrian access wouldn't be lost as a result of these plans. That's just one example. But again, there's one issue that everybody in the community is clear on, and that's don't touch the bridge. If the city council moves forward with we may touch that bridge, we don't think the community is right, then my guess is that the community will become even more involved in this issue because we must in order to preserve the circumstances of Mission Canyon as they are. Uh, so I would encourage you to follow the lead of your staff and forego the grant uh, and work on solutions that can be implemented in the near future uh, at much less cost. Thank you very much. Ray Smith will be followed by Carl Hutterer. Madam Mayor and members of the council, my name is Ray Smith. I'm chair of the fire committee for the Mission Canyon Association. Our association has been um, critic, uh, in the forefront of trying to maintain fire safety within our community. Uh, I've provided you with a letter uh, giving my rationale for going forward and pursuing the grant in, in, fa in favor of the federal funds, um, and I won't repeat those uh, issues here. I'd like to draw your attention, though, to something. If you look at the back wall, you'll see a small sign that says capacity, 136 persons. I've, you know as well as I do the rationale behind having a capacity um, uh, set for public places. Now expand your horizons and think of a community with limited ingress and egress and ask yourself what happens in an emergency uh, when to try to get people in and out of the canyon. 
and uh, they, they say don't, uh, there isn't a problem, uh, don't fix it. But that sign is there because of past history and knowing uh, that there are issues that can come up and looking at the public safety issue. So I would urge you to, uh, to go after the grant funds, uh, f support discussions between well-meaning and open-minded community members and government planners to seek a solution to this public safety issue, and indeed it is a public safety issue while ensuring the integrity of our historic landmarks. The ingress and egress from the canyon is an important public safety issue, and I urge you to consider that uh, and allow us to go forward uh, with the funds to pursue that issue. Thank you. Carl, Carl Hutteru will be followed by Shelley Bookspan. Madam Mayor, uh, members of City Council, my name is Carl Hutter. I'm the president of the Mission Canyon Association and also a property owner in the corridor. And I've been authorized by our board of directors to speak on their behalf. I was also the executive director of the Santa Barbara Museum of Natural History for 12 years. And during those years lived within a stone's throw of the Mission Creek Bridge. I probably know that piece of territory more intimately than, all, than almost anybody else. Besides personally witnessing accidents and near misses, I have heard numerous comments from staff, elderly docents, and family visitors who recounted distressing experience in, experiences in coming to the museum on foot. Our board of directors is united in considering the passage of Mission Bridge hazardous to anybody, but especially for pedestrians and bicyclists. It has been 85 years since Mission Bridge was widened and the current traffic conditions were established. Since then, traffic is multiplied, perhaps by a factor of 10, but road conditions have remained the same. We're very lucky that so far the only things that have happened are bruises and total cars. The, directions of the, the directors of the Mission Canada Association are extremely concerned about safety conditions on, on, in the bridge corridor and for that reason have strongly supported the concept of substantial improvements from the very beginning. We are keenly aware of the importance of the historic resources in the corridor and want them preserved and protected. However, such protection must not be an excuse for doing nothing. The apparent conflict between the imperatives of historic uh, preservation and the protection of human life can be resolved rationally but only through a vigorous design process that combine, combines the full range of technical expertise with broad community participation and input. It is this kind of process that grant funding would make possible. It would be unconscionable if we wanted for tragedy to make us move. A tragic accident could not only cause potentially grievous harm, but it would also lead to pressure for hasty measures of mitigation they might not be as sensitive to the historic resources as a good design process would be. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Shelley Bookspan will be followed by Fred Sweeney. Mayors, uh, <clears throat> Mayor and Council Members, I'm Shelley Bookspan. I'm a longtime resident of Santa Barbara. I am uh, honored to be on the Board of Directors of uh, Mission Heritage Trail Association. I am also uh, privileged to be the president of the Riviera Association. The board of directors of the Riviera Association has authorized me to speak on its behalf here and now, uh, strongly encouraging council to seek to obtain the funds. Um, there is no design yet for this hope for civic improvement process, so there really can be no basis for arguing against seeking the funding because of the design. Um, we have a crying need of, that you've heard about for safety and access. Uh, the city council, you guys, last year, two years ago, was it, um, saw that need. You voted to put the multi multimodal project into the capital improvement fund. Uh, there was no funding. Uh, this is an opportunity to, f of, to find funding. Uh, no one I know denies that the bridge is of uh, significance. Uh, it is a landmark. Uh, this is true even though the west side was completely um, reconstructed in 1930. It was moved 14 feet to the west. The original was uh, 14 feet 
The roadbed was 14 feet narrower. It also was a dirt road. Um, it was rebuilt. Some of the arcs have been changed. You can see some of the original photos. Uh, this is, does not mean it's no longer historically significant, but it is, doesn't represent the 1890s structure that it was the original. Um, and this fact was not known when those public hearings took place. Um, this came out when, when the HSR was done. Am I done? Yep. Okay. There's, a, there's a clock right there. So, oh, you're right. Yep. Thank you. Mr. Sweeney will be followed by Tom Jacobs. Madam Mayor, Council, thank you. Uh, would you be able to put that on? I, I put a... Uh, yeah, thank you. I'm sure how to put it. Uh, Madam Mayor, first, I need to thank you uh -oh. first, because you're the one that set a lot of this in motion when we took our walkabout with Supervisor Carbajal. Between the two of you, uh, you made some of this happen, so thank you. Uh, I'm here today representing uh, as president of the Upper East Association. I'm also a member of the Mission Heritage Trail Association Board of Directors. Um, this area in it encompasses and defines the area of the Upper East uh, in the city limits. It turns out that uh, the Museum of Natural History, the areas around Los Encinas, that's all in the city of Santa Barbara. That's part of the Upper East Association, part of the Upper East neighborhood as defined by the city. So we consider this part of our neighborhood. So we're very uh, anxious as a neighborhood association to assure that safety is uppermost in terms of making a safe way to walk and bike through this corridor. So we would urge you to uh, authorize the staff to proceed uh, with this uh, area. And the other thing, we've been talking a lot uh, to you about this pinch point. I'm going to show you this. Those are the pinch point items, and the reason they're pinch point items is the fact that two of those areas are the piece of the aqueduct and the reservoir. That forms the pinch point. Also, the geometry, there was much discussion about the east side. In our larger vision master planning process, which we did hold a public workshop on, we are looking at, as the Safe Passage Mission Heritage Trail Association, looking at having a easterly access utilizing a bridge across the um, pipeline. So I see the mayor is about ready to pull the button. So I've made a copy of my statement, and I'll hand that to you um, in more detail. The other thing I do want to mention just in the last few seconds, as the designer of the airport, one of my jobs was to relocate the historic terminal to a safe location outside of the runway. We were able to do that and keep intact the historical nature of that entire terminal. So things can be done just as they were done at the Santa Barbara Courthouse in the 1980s where changes were made for handicap accessibility. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Tom Jacobs will be followed by Steve Forsell. Madam Mayor and members of the council, my name is Tom Jacobs. I have served on the board of the Mission Canyon Association, and for six years I was the chairman of the Architectural Review Committee of Mission Canyon Association. We have lots of anecdotal evidence that says the way is dangerous because of the configuration of the corridor and the intensity of use. For Mr. Hotchkiss, most recently, from 2013 to 2015, the Stegosaurus wall was hit five times. On two of those five occasions, the power pole and the intersection of Mission Canyon Road and Puesta del Sol uh, was also felled, creating power outages, electrical outages that lasted, in one case, 36 hours. On two other occasions, the Stegosaurus wall collapsed inward as a result of severe collisions. Even while conducting one of our walkabouts, our own supervisor, Carbajal, was nearly caught unawares in the middle of the road by a car coming down the canyon. Why was he in the middle of the road? Because there is no continuous walkway on the west side of the roadway. He was stuck, and he had no other option other than to take his chances and hustle across to the other side. Near misses, misses such as these abound, and many of us had had them or witnessed them. Luckily, to this point, we have no serious injury. But we can 
demonstrate the level of pedestrian and bicycle traffic by counting the numbers. The Mission Heritage Trail Association is in the process of assembling private funds to authorize an $8,000 plus study by a locally respected traffic engineering firm to ascertain the number of people that walk uh, or bike through the corridor. The privately funded study survey will be done to monitor those numbers during an event weekend, typical summer Saturday, and a weekday. These figures will help us to determine and verify the intensity of the usage of this circulation corridor. Recent traffic studies already exist to determine the level of vehicular use. Thank you. The data will become part of the public record and used to demonstrate that, indeed, mission control, we have a problem. Thank you. Steve Forcell will be followed by Don Olson. Madam Mayor, City Council, my name is Steve Forcell, and I am a founding member of Mission Heritage Trail Association and Safe Passages. First, I want to thank you for your past support of our safety project. The Council has stepped up to help advance this worthy effort on several occasions, and it's clear that you understand the safety and access issues involved. No one is more keenly aware of the current infrastructure needs of Santa Barbara than you. The list of projects that has been identified is enormous. The costs run into the hundreds of millions. I'm aware of the difficulty in allocating limited available funds to these infrastructure projects and the dilemma you face in prioritizing them. I'm also aware that funding sources for many of these projects are unpredictable, specific, and often time sensitive. Your job is made more difficult based on state and federal restrictions on the use of available funds. The Mission Park to Mission Canyon pedestrian and bikeway project is fortunate to have a possible funding source available from the Highway Bridge Program. The city's six-year capital improvement program approved in March of 2015 included corridor improvements between Old Mission Santa Barbara and the Santa Barbara Natural History Museum as well as the restoration and enhancement of the Mission Canyon Bridge over Mission Creek. The Highway Bridge Program grant that Public Works received from Caltrans is a rare and timely opportunity to move this project forward. As noted in the staff presentation, beginning October 1, 2016, the criteria for being eligible for funding under this program will be more restrictive, and the project before you may not qualify. Thus, time is of the essence to move the project forward. I would urge you not to forego the HBP grant op opportunity. As council members, you are continually required to make tough decisions regarding funding projects. An opportunity such as this one does not present itself often, and I would hope that you would seize that opportunity as well as explore all funding options. Two seconds left. There Thank you. There you go. Thank you. Don Olson will be followed by Heidi Jones. Good afternoon, Mayor Schneider and council members. I'm Don Olson, president of the board of directors of the Mission Heritage Trail Association and one of the co-founders of the Safe Passage Project. I took on this challenge in 2011 after retiring from 44 years of community and public service, the last 28 years with the city of Santa Barbara where I worked as housing development supervisor, city planner, and city special projects manager. In these roles with the city, I learned a great deal about our community and the lay of the land. The, stockholder, uh, the stakeholders involved with the Safe Passage Project and the Mission Heritage Trail Association include the three adjacent neighborhood associations, all of the institutions that lie within the corridor, the Kay family, and representatives from several community-based historic preservation advocacy organizations. Our first project was to document the safety issues in the corridor, which led to the publication of the information package, packet, the purpose, purpose of which was to inform people of the uh, you know, uh, numerous and complex safety issues.
uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Heidi Jones will be followed by Kellen DeForest, and the final speaker will be Mike Imwala. Good afternoon, Madam Mayor and Council Members. Thank you for being here today to listen to um, us. I'm a member of the Mission Heritage Trail Association and a private planner with Suzanne Elledge Planning and Permitting Services, and I urge you to continue the discussion about this corridor. I think it is a jewel in our city, and I think that it deserves the study and the information, the environmental analysis that it deserves to make an informed decision about what the potential um, areas of improvement are. Um, it's a shame, I think, that we can't safely traverse this area, and I think that uh, we need to spend the time to have the conversation and the dialogue to look at that. Um, so I urge you to pursue the Highway Bridge Grant fund funding and uh, continue the conversation. Thank you. Callum DeForest. Good afternoon, Madam Mayor and City Council person, people. I am Kellen DeForest, and I was born, well, I wasn't quite born in Mission Canyon, but I grew up there and is vitally familiar with the problems. And boy, has the traffic increased since my childhood. The state allows H. PB funds to be used to investigate a project's feasibility and environmental determination. An investigation could show that the environmental and historical consequences negate any widening of the bridge. That is a possibility. Though investigation might, a thorough investigation might produce a design that adheres to the Secretary of Interior's guidelines and retains the maximum of the corridor's historic fabric, along with providing safe passage for pedestrians and bicycles. I respectively request the staff request the staff recommendation be denied and the HPB funding be obtained. Thank you. Thank you. Mike and Wall. Madam Mayor, <clears throat> members of the City Council, my name is Mike Imwally. I have participated in the Mission Heritage Trail Association since its inception, um, since the inception of its predecessor, Safe Passage. Since the beginning, a team of professional planners, architects, engineers, historians, and archaeologists have worked to identify, inventory, assess, and preserve cultural resources within the Mission Canyon Corridor. Former city historian Mary Louise Days wanted me to point out that she has advised on historical matters since the group's inception and that the group has consistently operated within the desired parameters for the protection and preservation of the historic resources in the area. In addition to wanting to provide safe passage for pedestrian and bicycles, our goal is to celebrate these unique historic cultural resources and educate the public about the history and prehistory of the canyon. In order to do this, we must provide safe, accessible routes to the, to the resources for bicycles and pedestrians. Um, I've been asked to point out uh, that we have recently published a new document called Preserving, Renewing, Enhancing a Cradle of Santa Barbara um, that is based on facts and figures derived from exhaustive research and not hearsay and conjecture. And I implore you to all look at it very carefully. It is a much more broad approach to the whole Mission Canyon corridor that has been presented here with just the bridge issue. Uh, I recommend that Council please direct staff to pursue any possible funding opportunities to make this project move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that concludes the public comment portion of this item. It's to the Council. Mr. Rouse. Thank you, Madam Mayor. The question for Mr. Bailey. Um, one of the concerns mentioned, one that I share, is about egress. Are any of the potential improvements or the potential changes of roadway uh, beneficial to egress for that area? Because it's, it's pretty hard to get out of that area in an emergency. So would uh, any of that be beneficial? Would it be inconsequential? What, what, do you have an opinion on that? 
Madam Mayor, Council Member Rouse, um, I think overall it would be beneficial. Uh, it would make evacuations um, more reliable. Um, you know, anytime we have a roadway built to modern standards over a bridge built to modern standards, um, that roadway is going to be more reliable in the event of an emergency. Ms. Maria? Um, I had a question too, Madam Mayor, because um, people were talking about the, the bridge that's there now. Is the plan to remove that bridge? So you, the footbridge, the footbridge. Oh, Madam Mayor, Council Member Murillo, the, the footbridge, I think that we would still need to do a lot of uh, determination to see if we can even leave that. It's a, quite a substandard bridge. The, the community has expressed interest in leaving that. I think the challenge will be as we move forward is, is it's a very substandard um, bridge. It doesn't meet any ADA accessibility. So as we bring the, the bridge up to ADA standards, if, if you did move forward, I think that would be the question for Caltrans if we could even leave it. Okay, so the, the footbridge is not ADA compliant. It looks sturdy, but okay, I trust you. Thank you. But the, I have a question, actually. Can you put the picture of the bridge, the arc you know, from, from the creek? Yeah. So what parts are the historic part of the bridge and what parts have been changed from when the bridge was first constructed? Do we know that? Because I get, and maybe if you can comment on some of the public comment talked about the original meetings when they were saying don't touch the bridge and then information that may have come out subsequent to those meetings about the bridge. And maybe you can clarify that, that I, or whether there were changes made to the bridge um, that were not known at the time of the public hearing or if you can help me out with, with that piece of information. But, uh, but also clarify for me what's been altered and what has not. Thanks. Madam Mayor, in what has been altered is in the modern times is this um, pedestrian uh, bridge that's kind of a plank bridge that's on the east easterly side and it's uh, it's actually doweled into the bridge it's not in a it's not at the time it was done it wasn't done to any kind of historic standards in terms of the, the appreciation wasn't there at the time for the the uh, sandstone um, and kind of leaving it unmarred as we do today in modern times about pre preservation. One of the things we found out since the process and since we uh, left you, um, since you put it in the capital improvement program, is we've done a historic resources report for the, the mission, uh, for this bridge. And the, the, some of the very interesting things we found out is about the history and um, actually the reason that um, that pedestrian appendage was placed on it is because of the residents complaining that there wasn't enough room for them to walk across the bridge. Um, it was widened um, from its original, um, from when it was originally put in in 1930. It was referenced in the public uh, hearing portion of this meeting, and um, and that was kind of an inch, that was a study to see if we could, if you remember when we call the the walls on each side, the Segastorus wall and the the wall on the southerly side of the bridge. One of the big questions we had is, could those be moved? Is that a was that a disruption to historic resources? And what the re report found is that not only had they been moved once before, but the entire bridge had been widened in that. The, the, the portion that we at least suggest in this presentation, the westerly side of the bridge, that's the portion that was widened. It was widened to the west in the past in 1930. Does that answer your yeah, question? Yeah, so the bridge was widened to the west in the past. Those walls were moved. And then the east side, it was just the addition of that pedestrian portion of the bridge, which is not sta up to standard code. Is that accurate? I think that's correct, yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, Mr. Hart. Well, I think this process, um, this five-year process, probably longer even if you really take it the, the beginning of the conversation about making improvements in this area, um, has resulted in a lot more information and a lot of progress. It, we don't have unanimity but we're not probably ever going to have unanimity. But I know that um, the Mission Heritage Trail Association has tried really hard to um, incorporate all the different points of view um, of the, the um, what is the other organization called? We've got lots of the, the Coalition to Preserve Mission Canyon. Now, there, there certainly still are concerns 
Um, and I think fundamentally they are about two things. One is the historic nature of the bridge and the historic resources in the neighborhood. And then the other is the concern about making the geometric changes to the roadway and increasing speeds. And um, I think those things can be worked through. I think those are issues that are legitimate and that they're important and that they are going to be the most important part of the next phase of this effort, which is looking at more specific designs and really getting into this in a fine-grained way. So I think that um, you know the, pro the public process that we've had to date and the I, I have great confidence in the design review boards and their abilities to really do make this a quality project and can continue. And the reality is that we are facing a significant infrastructure problem and funding for it is is the biggest dilemma. And ironically, we are at the whim of the state and federal agencies that provide funding for infrastructure, and it's their grant decisions that drive our investment decisions because what they don't apparently feel as though um, we're capable of making our own decisions about priorities. They believe that their priorities are, are – um, more appropriate for local governments. I disagree. I think we would be better off having access to those funds in a more flexible way than to have to go through a rigid grant process to um, to make those determinations ourselves. But that's the world we live in. So we're looking at um, a chance to provide, you know, five to eight to ten million dollars worth of investment in the infrastructure that ultimately is necessary, um, and using those state funds through the federal government or not and saying, no, we're going to stop, and we're not going to make those improvements, and we're going to, we're going to live with the, the situation that exists today. And even though we are very strained for coming up with the additional local match, um, that ratio of, of outside funding to local funds is dramatic and significant and unachievable any other way. So I think it's worth pursuing. You know, we, I know we're putting $100,000, $150,000 at risk, um, getting to the next phase of this um, design to find out whether or not it's possible to do something that really works that's, that makes sense. But I think that is a reasonable investment in the context of potentially uh, big benefit to the public in terms of access to that area and at the same time respecting the incredibly important historic resources that exist out there. Mr. White. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, well, I really appreciate the. this is – uh, a conversation which uh, is as informed and as and as uh, articulate as any that we've been, that we have had. Uh, these the people on both sides of this issue are are uh, knowledgeable and uh, convincing. Very, this is a very difficult issue. Um, I do support the project, uh, and I am. Mostly, I'm very concerned about the funding, and I appreciate Mr. Hart uh, setting a context um, that really comes from his professional background of, of, of dealing with these larger-scale transportation issues, and it's, it's a source of great frustration to me that we are so starved for, for funds on this uh, massive uh, – of our massive infrastructure uh, that we're – we're looking at this project now. It's got a clock on it that it's, that it's going to die unless we move forward with it. I do think that if we had a, our, our half-cent sales tax in place, uh, that we would be looking at this issue with more uh, willingness. And uh, I hope that we can look at that sort of thing uh, coming up and that this project can coincide with hopefully a uh, – a, a sales tax uh, issue uh, assessment coming forward uh, in the future. So uh, the issues of safety, and I, I raised, I was in my questioning, I was talking about this tragic piece, ironic piece of, of the funding puzzle that I've witnessed over my years here where some, a terrible accident occurs somewhere and then lo and behold there's money to do something about it. And that is, it seems to be a sad truth. And uh, obviously that ATP option is one that uh, can be looked at uh, in the future should, should funding occur. But I think going forward with the, uh, the speculation that the money will be there, uh, I'm, I'm, I think it's worth the city gambling the $150,000 
uh, to to do that, and that hopefully in the next couple of years we'll have a stronger funding source for such uh, projects as this, and that we won't miss out on this leveraged improvement. Clearly, connecting people from to between the mission and the Natural History Museum is uh, those are it's one of the most desperately needed links that we have in this region. And it, it's uh, the team that has worked on this over these last few years have, have found it to be a Rubik's Cube. I mean, it's, two, it's the two different jurisdictions. I mean, as I recall, the, the, the city-county line is in the middle of the darn bridge. So just it's been one of those specific, and then the historic resources, just uh, a very, very challenging situation. So I'd like to see this planning effort move forward, and I'm hopeful that we have a funding source in the future. I don't think we have it now. Thank you. Mr. Hotchkiss. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, you said in response to Mr. Rouse's question regarding egress, you used the word reliable. Can you tell me what that means? In this instance, Madam Mayor, Councilmember Hotchkiss, um, in the event of uh, an emergency uh, or an evacuation um, event, um, things can happen to our infrastructure that make those facilities um, not as reliable, not as usable. So um, when I say reliable, it means um, it, it's less likely to be impacted by uh, an, an evacuation or emergency event. So does that mean that it would increase traffic flow? No, I wouldn't expect so. Um, hey, what is reliable come? Do you think the bridge fa would fail? or I'm not It's sure. possible, and, and that's um, something that could be looked at. Um, you know, and as we look at the design, perhaps um, the overhead power lines that are on the corridor could potentially be an issue. And they, I, I'm, I'm not saying it would happen, but... Those? We, it, it's possible, and potentially overhead power lines or trees falling down on the road can uh, affect reliability as well. There, there's a lot of different things to keeping a corridor open. Right, but that an doesn't change with this design. It could. I, I fail to see it because it says quite clearly in the report that there's nothing, there's no structural problems with the bridge, correct? I believe so, but um, in, in terms of overhead power lines or trees, those, those are the type of things that okay. could potentially be addressed. Um, the, we were talking about accidents before. Uh, and then we're, we're talking all about cars. What's the pedestrian record? Uh, in the past 10 years, I don't believe there's been a pedestrian or bicycle-involved collision. None? Not that I'm aware of. Well, an awful lot of this presentation was about improving pedestrian access and making it safer. How do we make it safer when there's none? Um, Councilmember Hotchkiss, I, I'm I, not trying to embarrass you. It's no, a rhetorical I, I, question. No, I understand what you're saying. Um, you know, I, ideally, um, we maintain zero collisions, even if I, there even if there were a project. Um, I believe the the issue. Here is that um, uh, the lack of facilities is perceived as a barrier, and people are not using the corridor. So um, that could be a contributing factor as to why there. I didn't mean to put you on the spot there, but that is a surprising statistic. Um, it's true there are no sidewalks, at least on the on one side. Well, really both. It's there's a long dirt pathway that uh, I see people, I, I guess, mostly walking on and riding bikes. Um, that response makes it really difficult for me to fix a problem that doesn't exist. Um, and frankly, I'm, I sort of like the charm of the canyon. Um, I, I think I maybe end up alone on this, but um, I'm not sure that it's wise to, as, as much effort has gone into this, uh, to move it forward, to, to move it forward. I would say that this... Um, Mission Heritage Trail Association, the report was historic, had really remarkable historic things. I, Don, I think you did it. It was really excellent. Um, while we focus on this, there are all sorts of needs around the city. And 
those seem to me more imperative, and I don't even know what they all are. You know better than I do, Mr. Bailey. Um, this is to me like elective surgery. It's nice when you got a lot of money, but if you don't, you dispense with a lift, if I can put it that way. So, um, as again, I said, I, I don't think this is a good idea, but I think it'll probably move forward. Um, but I, I'm, I'm going to vote against it. Thank you for listening. Ms. Maria. Thank you, Mayor Schneider. I agree with um, Councilmember Hotchkiss that there are probably more pressing needs. Um, however, I will be supporting going forward um, with the with the grant. With all due respect to um, Ms. Kahn and Mr. Ebenstein and the other people um, who who share your views, which are valid, you I. I, I know where you're coming from, and I, and, and I, and I hear you. Um, the bridge, however, has been altered in the past, and safety to me is, is of the utmost importance. I was persuaded by the gentleman from the fire committee. We have a fire burning right now, and that area has been impacted. Um, we, need, we need to do what we can to make the, to make the corridor safer, and when Mr. Hotchkiss was asking about Mountain Drive, the, the answer came back that the speeds won't be picking up coming from the mission to, from the south approach. So, so the traffic there won't, will not be impacted. That was a great question. Like, what's, what, what is it going to do to, to Mountain Drive and people spilling out there? So thank, thank you for answering that. But I, I tell you, I'm able-bodied today, and I was scared when I was running across the streets today another 10 years i don't know my yoga keeps me loose there'll be a time when i i won't walk that area because because it's not safe for a pedestrian and um i i it has to be it, it has to be it has to be safe for bikes and and people walking around there um so that so those so those are my reasons i hope they're respected by the people who who i respect um that that you're fighting for your cause, and um, and I love the bridge too. Safety is more important. Um, thank you, Mr. Rouse. <clears throat> thank you, Madam Mayor. Well, it's I think Mr. DeForest pointed out to me one time. I think they were talking about this in 1947. It's been problematic for a long time, but uh, I do respect the uh, uh, the, the, the the folks that have gone forward and made a very detailed report. I've gone on the walk with them. I've done the tour. I certainly couldn't figure it out by myself exactly how we solve these problems. And there are other pressing problems in town. Uh, but to Mr. Hotchkiss's point about the about the statistics, yeah, I mean, to me, that's almost the the running with scissors syndrome. You probably don't know anybody put their eye out running with scissors, but by God, it's probably still not a bad idea. At least your mom told you that. So walking to the Natural History Museum from the Mission area, which is what we're trying to encouraged because that is one of our great historic resources. It is one of our most precious areas. If that can be accomplished, and it can be accomplished in a safe way without people even having to dash across the street, uh, there's an amazing amount of traffic, both um, commercial with all the truck, uh, construction that goes on in Mission Canyon and residential. Um, I think looking at the improvements is wise. I don't know if anything will ever come to fruition. I don't. But I think the opportunity to apply for these grants, go forward and see if we can actually get something, especially for pedestrian improvements along that way. Um, yes, it is charming, and if I lived in that neighborhood, I'd fight for lack of change myself, except that I think this particular change can be within the character of the neighborhood without affecting the, without affecting the aesthetics and potentially get um, that kind of pedestrian access, the kind of activity we'd really like to promote as opposed to having to get in your car to go from the mission, the mission parking lot up to the Natural History Museum parking lot. So I'm, I'm going to be supporting uh, going forward. Mr. Dominguez? So a question for staff, just to clarify. The $4.8 million construction price tag, that was solely for the added-on bridge, pedestrian bridge west of the bridge? Uh, Madam Mayor, Councilmember Dominguez, I think you're referring to the, the, the previous project. Correct. And I'm just going to go back to that slide. 
Slide 15. And, and the, what that, what the 4.8 million, then, and that's what we estimated when we applied for the active transportation planning grant, that would improve um, pretty much the, the corridor uh, from the mission uh, through to Puesto Sol was the length of that project, and that adds the pedestrian uh, bridge adjacent to the existing bridge and moves the walls. Realigns the walls, uh, realigns the road on uh, just to the north of the bridge as well, providing for the westerly path to Puerto Sol. So, how much of the four point eight was just for the bridge and moving the walls? And I'm just trying to compare apples to apples here to see. Uh, Madam Mayor, Councilmember Dominguez, we do have that uh, estimate printed out. Could take me a little bit if. Uh, if you would like, rather than try to give you a guess right ask. now, um, I could um, actually, if there's other questions, I can look at it and get the okay. answer in a few minutes. Yeah. The, um, what's the average daily traffic across the bridge? It's a little over 10,000 cars a day. And has that been trending up or down, or has that been pretty constant over the last decade? It's risen uh, the last time I recall um, in early in my career, it was in the nine, so I would say 9,000. So it's, you know, it's probably up about 1,000. And the, um, from the report, October 1st is the deadline for applying or for starting to spend the HBP funds, or what exactly is October 1st? The, um, the program is changing, um, and... The state is um, is pulling the program back to only address those bridges that are uh, falling apart or falling down. So in the future, uh, past that date, um, Caltrans will no longer be receiving or improving projects that have um, uh, functional obsolete parts uh, be, uh, beyond the, abs the structure of the bridge. So if the if the bridge will stand and is still still structurally sound, they're not going to be funding any projects. Um, this this bridge is in that case. It's structurally sound. Uh, it just has obsolete uh, portions that are leading up to it, and then the width. So past that date, they will no longer take applications uh, uh, to complete that kind of work that that represents this project. So we have to submit an application by October 1st? We have to confirm that we would like to proceed uh, with the, uh, fixing these, these deficiencies. And what do we have to do to confirm that? Uh, Madam Mayor, Council Member Dominguez, we have um, an active grant with Caltrans, and some of the initial work that has gone into to getting to this point has fallen under that grant. So it would just be um, checking back in with Caltrans, letting them know where we're at in the process and getting um, buy-in from them, which we believe we already have through prior conversations, but with the intent that we would need to go out and bring a consultant on board. Uh, I think we'd want to just reaffirm that before we do go forward. But we could uh, begin to draft an RFP. Um, we could begin that this afternoon um, if the direction is to move forward. And that would be to spend the 100 to 150,000? Of city funds, correct. Okay. And the uh, lifespan of this current bridge, do we have an estimate of when it would be become structurally not uh, viable or structurally deficient? Uh, I think it would be great uh, if we could, kind of like predicting uh, water main breaks. It's hard to say and it's especially hard with a really old structure like this where uh, there aren't the obvious things to look for uh, but just the fact that it's been there most of it's been there since uh, the late 1800s um, and we do get Caltrans inspects these bridges every two years so we do get inspection reports there haven't been any work recommendations associated with any structural elements so there's no reason for concern at this point in time, and we do get those inspection reports every two years. So that raises a concern of the nature such that two years from now they can come back and say this bridge is now no longer structurally sound? Or what are the types of grades that Caltrans would give a bridge like this, given its age and its 
um, engineering design? Yeah, so they, they come out and they, there are certain elements of the bridge that they give uh, scores to. They rank it. Usually it's zero through five for the different elements. And that all gets put into a, a program and it spits out a sufficiency rating. So that's like the overall um, integrity of the bridge. So you can kind of see that number over time, uh, what, what it's trending as. Uh, but you can also look at each of the individual elements and see um, if there's anything of concern. Um, and right now I don't believe there is uh, on that bridge. It doesn't have a great sufficiency rating just due to its age, but it's been um, Is that of, the 0 to 100 number? It is 0 to What's 100. What's the number currently? Um, I believe it is in the 50s. Oh, so that's actually really, you said it was not great. <laughs> so that's on the low side. Yes, that is on the low side, and it is close to being eligible for replacement. If a bridge is under 50, it's eligible for replacement. Um, it doesn't mean that that would be um, what you would do with it with a historic structure. They have a whole program uh, which allows you to treat the historic bridges differently and probably putting money into different rehab to get that uh, rating higher. But we haven't had to address that yet. Um, also, just for your information, Caltrans has recently uh, changed how they do bridge inspections. So I don't believe we've gotten a new inspection report since then, but what we're seeing across the board are the ratings are coming in higher than they have in the past. So there's rating inflation. I, I joke that the bridges heal themselves. So, yeah, but it's just a different methodology. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Did you have any comments on the item? So um, based on the fact that it seems like the bridge is at the low end of the uh, sufficiency spectrum, I think I'd be inclined to uh, push forward with the grant money while we still can. Thank you. Uh, I also want to thank everyone uh, involved in this. This is... Um, it's a it's a very important issue, and, and obviously there's a lot of care about this. the the bound The city county boundary is right at the north end of the bridge, right? so the entire bridge is in the city. But part of the right, correct. I'm seeing nods. Okay, but part of the full project includes changes north of the bridge. Okay, so is this a complete city? Grant application is this something we're continuing to work in partnership with the county? Is there county funding available for this you know gotta ask right so what what is what is the status and, and mr dobertine i do appreciate you being here today very much um what what is that partnership looking like madam mayor answer your first question we would continue in partnership should um we move forward and uh, beyond this point we would continue in partnership with the county it does the the lines are actually on the the boundaries are on the screen so here's the Here's the city limit, and then it actually it's over here too as well. So you go back into the city when you're in, on Paso del Sol. So is so, there any part of the project that would be in that in between area? Yes, yes right. The, the, so would the eleven point whatever percent whatever local match be allocated between the city and the county? I'd like to bring up Matt Daubertine from the, the <laughs> county to answer that question. I think it's a fair question to ask, right? Mr. Daubertine? Yep. Madam Mayor, members of the council, yes, absolutely. It is a, it's a fair question. I think what we wanted to do was sort of see what your uh, council is going to do today to move forward with the project or not. And then uh, we could circle back with staff, take a look at what it was going to take to do this initial phase of work. And um, I can take that forward to my bosses at the county and uh, ask, if, ask their opinion on it. Okay. We're open to it. Okay. Well, I think a couple of things strike me, because um, I, I know when this came to us a couple of years ago, I also asked about the east side versus the west side of the bridge, and, and I think there are some um, thinking about the all the different intersections. It does make it for a more difficult passage, and so I appreciate that that was um, looked at. And 
given that had the bridge not been moved before or the walls not been moved before, I might feel a lot different. Um, but, but knowing that they've had in the past and knowing that both the county and the city's historic resources staff and HLCs will be certainly part of this process with the highest integrity of, of doing what we can to limit the um, change to historic resources um, as much as possible. I know that, that that would be the case should we get uh, the funding for it. So I'm, I'm okay at this point going forward, but, but I do think it's important that we also send uh, a message or, you know, to, that the partnership with the county is a true partnership and that, uh, you know, the 150000 or whatever the amount is going to, the million dollars of, of, of that, which is a small portion of the bigger piece, should be shared because the project itself is shared between the two jurisdictions. And maybe, maybe the city has a bigger proportion, but, you know, I think that is something in terms of what the actual cost is going to be. Um, the bridge sounds like it's the more expensive piece of it, but it's not 100% of it. So to me, moving forward, that's part of it in, in having that partnership with the county is going to be uh, very important. So, um, and by the time we may know of this, we, uh, you know, we might have someone who used to sit up here on the dais who understands partnerships between the city and county who is going to represent that district. So that's uh, something to maybe you know, talk about. Who, who's in the state now might be able to help us with some funding. I don't know. Um, try to think of those things. Anyway, so, uh, but I, I want to respect and acknowledge the concerns of the community here. And that, to me, is going to be very important in terms of signing off on any contract or design review and, and the highest integrity process. And I know that that's the intent behind the safe passage and, and looking at all of these documents here. So, uh, but for now, I think it, it's prudent for us to move forward. Um, so, Ms. Maria. May I make a motion? Sure, go ahead. I move to direct staff to continue work on a highway bridge program grant from the state of California, um, Department of Transportation for the Mission Canyon Road Bridge over Mission Creek. Second. Okay, moved by Maria, second by Hart. Anything else on the motion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Opposed. Okay. So 6-1, Hotchkiss opposed. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. And we just have a couple items. So if you have any conversations, please take them outside the council chambers. Are there any council and um, council member committee assignment reports? Mr. Rouse. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We uh, met last night with the I'm Mesa. sorry. Please take your conversations outside the chambers, please. Bye. I, I see a lot of people talking in the back of the room. If you can please take, if you can take your conversations outside, please, so we can continue our meeting. Thank you, Mr. Rouse. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, last night, the uh, the Mesa Group had a meeting that I attended along with Ms. Mario uh, to talk about neighborhood issues, forming neighborhood watches. And by gosh, I brought up City College, believe it or not. So there's still a lot of a lot of passion, a lot of emotion going on up there. So we'll be going to hear from those folks sometime in the very near future. Ms. Mario? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Yes, and the West Side Neighborhood Association wants to replicate what Alice and the Mesa Village people have been doing in terms of street teams. Um, I'd like to congratulate the health care for all people to continue their march towards single-payer health care. I went to an event last night. Um, our sustainability committee looked at the bird refuge. So for people out there, the city is working on uh, the odor issue related to that um, uh, waterway, the troublesome uh, natural uh, area. Uh, I attended the funeral of uh, Cedric Robinson, and I just, professor at UCSB, a great man, just wanted to, to acknowledge his good work. Um, last, a couple of weeks ago, the Neighborhood Advisory Council looked at summer programs uh, for our underprivileged uh, youth. The C3H Coordinating Council had a meeting at Jody House, and we talked about the issues of homelessness related to brain injury. Um, so I really congratulate the good work that C3H is continuing to do, Madam Mayor. Mr. White. Thank you, Madam Mayor. The Kachuma Operation and Maintenance Board met, uh, had a special meeting last Wednesday. Um, the, I also I learned that the, the barge, moving the barge, which is needed to get to the deeper uh, part of the uh, Kachuma, um, has been delayed due to the fire. Uh, they're not wanting to disrupt that system, uh, obviously, for, for just uh, maintaining the, uh, the water 
supply as best as possible because there would be no water coming through the uh, tunnel for a couple of days when that move occurs. So there, that's been postponed now a week, as I understand it. Uh, Kachuma, the, the board uh, uh, staff has secured additional funding for the additional power that will be needed to pump water out of Kachuma. So an additional $360,000 has been garnered in, uh, in drought funding. And a budget uh, was approved uh, uh, for the next year, uh, slightly, slightly lower than last year, but uh, some, uh, an approximately uh, the $8 million range. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, at SBCAG last Thursday, well, both SBCAG and APCD adopted their budget for next year. Um, there was a presentation at SBCAG I thought might be of interest to the council um, to look at on tape, or, or I'm sure you can ask Mr. Spalding for the details. It had to do with movement patterns of vehicles in and out of the county, both from the north and the south. Um, it was very interesting. It was a little spooky in the sense that uh, you were, people were able to use cameras and uh, license plate recognition software where you could tell if a particular car entered the county in the morning and left the county in the afternoon and they then dovetailed that with DMV records and there was no names associated with them but it was just a little TMI but uh, you know too much information there um, and, and then on top of that with uh, just uh, surveys and so forth um, two takeaways I thought were interesting because we talk about the jobs housing balance quite a bit. In the Santa Maria area, there is quite a symmetrical commute between the Santa Maria Valley and up to San Luis Obispo, and then San Luis Obispo down into the Santa Maria Valley. So people who live in Santa Maria don't all come to South Santa Barbara County. Many of them go actually up into uh, San Luis Obispo County, and so there were numbers associated with that. And um, two-thirds of people who live in South Santa Barbara County work in South Santa Barbara County. So I know we, we hear a lot that no one who lives here can afford to work here or what you know that obviously there's commuting issues there's obviously we know that we know that there's congestion on the freeway and and we're working on that but um you know there is still two-thirds of the commute is going between Goleta, Santa Barbara, Santa Barbara, Goleta, uh, and so that data. It's a snapshot. You know, it was one day taken um, on a Tuesday last year, uh, but it was, um, I thought, interesting information. Um, might be worth checking the tape on that. So uh, with that, we have some closed sessions, and we're not doing item 26, so we have the other two. Conference with Labor Negotiator, item 24, and item 25, um, Public Employee Public Employee Performance Evaluation, Government Code Section 54957B1. Thank you. And we will adjourn from closed session. Thank you. Madam Mayor, I think, I think you mean to do item 26 for closed session and not item 25. You mean to do the city administrator and not the Correct. city attorney. And that's item 26. Is no, city I have 25 as city administrator right here. I've got different. Which? Never mind. What do you have? What, what, right. 26 is which? Okay, well, the one that's in my packet is item 20. So we're doing the city administrator one, not the city attorney one. Why we have two different numbers, I don't know. Good question. Thank you very much.